Hello, my name is Björn Brems. I'm a neurobiologist at the University of Regensburg in Germany. And the reason I'm talking to you today is to give a short introduction into a document that we've recently published on an idea of how to replace scholarly journals. Now, why am I talking to you today about this sort of topic? For the last 15 years or so, almost, I've been involved in various aspects of infrastructure reform. Why am I interested in infrastructure reform? Well, the virtual background of a library gives it away to a certain extent. For hundreds of years, libraries have been the center of where the world's knowledge was archived, made accessible, curated. So in those nearly 15 years that I've been involved in infrastructure reform, one recurring topic has always been to bring libraries back to their rightful place as the center in academic life where all the world's knowledge is curated, stored, archived, and made accessible. And hence the virtual background of a library. And today, researchers often associate libraries with just the institution that pays for the journals. Most of my colleagues have never visited a library since their graduate student studies days. Libraries today are a far cry at some institutions, at least are a far cry from what they used to be. And so one of the aspects under which um, we propose to replace journals with a modern alternative is that this modern alternative is situated and coordinated by libraries. Today, we're facing a trinity of failures where access is really not among them. The main problem that we're facing is that today, the reliability of scientific work, of experimental scientific work, in most cases, leaves much to be desired. And one of the underlying factors that drives this unreliability is the need for researchers to publish in high reputation journals. The problem is that this reputation is not based in any kind of evidence. On the contrary, if one looks at the methodological quality and other um, factors for scientific reliability, one finds that the most prestigious journals publish the least reliable science. And so for rewarding people to publish in places that publish unreliable science, we, to some extent, reward publishing unreliable science. And so one of the drivers in the so-called replication crisis are our journals. The second biggest problem is an affordability crisis that has its roots in the serial crisis um, of the 1980s and 90s, and that by the commercialization of open access has uh, only gotten worse. We roughly pay about 10 times the publication costs, nine to 10 times the publication costs of an average scholarly article. And so one may wonder what the um, journals are doing, what the publishers are doing uh, with this money. Well, they're certainly not investing it into better functionalities because that is the third major uh, failure in our trinity of failures um, that are, is prompting us to campaign for a journal replacement. And that is that our current journals just lack some very, very basic functionality that extends beyond articles and includes also our research data in our code. So what we would like to have in, after all, it's 2021, what we would like to have is an automated system that take, takes care of our narratives, of our data and our code to make sure that all three of them are published in a coherent and interactive way um, to make our literature less static, to make our narratives accessible and interactive such that uh, you can update and interact with the data and the code that is linked to those, na to to those narratives. So this is the status quo, the problems that we're facing right now. If we just continue as normal, we don't replace academic journals, um, what kind of prospects are we facing? 
Well, for one, none of the three function, none of the three crises or problems um, appeared to be in any way, shape, or form um, improved or mitigated. On the contrary, what we see is that uh, some part of the money that we are overpaying the publishers with is being spent on tools that capture the entire scientific workflow from finding literature to writing and citing to data analysis, data storage, or uh, analysis of citations and publications. So the coverage of the entire workflow has that the publishers are aiming for has increased dramatically beyond just publishing research um, narratives. So both the things we do before we publish and the things that happen after we publish are now firmly in the hands of uh, those publishers. And what do they do? Well, all of these tools, of course, they collect data on the users that use them. And what the publishers are doing is that they're aggregating this data to some extent also with private data. Um, and then they sell it. That's one of the things that they do. And uh, another thing that they do is uh, to try and use that data to position themselves ahead of the competition. So very in analogously to how they have successfully monopolized the individual article that can only be accessed in a single journal. Uh, and as they have successfully monopolized the journals such that if you have to publish in a particular journal at a particular rank in a particular field, you don't really have much choice. Uh, in the same way, they're now attempting to monopolize the entire scientific workflow. And so um, we don't see that our trifecta of crisis is going to be tackled anytime soon. One of the main reasons underlying this problem is that we do not, as we as the scientific community, we do not have sufficient control over this part of our infrastructure. So our proposal is to bring that part of the infrastructure back into our uh, control. And so what we're suggesting is that we're restoring governance over this infrastructure and the ownership of our research objects, text, data, and code, back to the scientific community. The way, main way we propose of doing this is to replace the legacy journals with a decentralized, resilient, evolvable network that is interconnected by open standards. That is the important aspect here, is that if we publish, let's say, with our library, if we publish our research data, our code, and our narratives in a way that is uh, standardized, it means that the service provider that is running this infrastructure can be replaced. And so we have uh, um, competition among service providers for publication services. Uh, a recent example of that is uh, Open Research Europe, which was awarded via a tender process and not via some negotiations with a monopolist. And once this contract runs out, the platform Open Research Europe that is run by the U uh, European Union can, the Euro if, once that contract runs out, the European Union can simply replace the service provider uh, with a cheaper one or one that offers more functionality for the same money or any other after, after any other um, criteria. So that would replace the monopolies of current journals with a genuine functioning and well-regulated market where substitutable service providers compete and innovate. And that allows us then as researchers to replace journal prestige as a metric of quality with systematic assessment of research quality. So we can use some of this data that currently the publishers are collecting about us to find out who produces the most reliable code, who produces a lot of data that we want, who is reviewing uh, other people's work very well, who does excellent teaching, these sorts of aspects that we're currently are at a, uh, running into troubles trying to quantify and to compare people among. Um, these things is what, uh, are, are what the publishers are collecting and this would be brought back under our control. For that, we propose to form a standards body that is analogous to the W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium, and that 
um, develops open standards that lead to open infrastructure and open source norms such that uh, in the future it will be impossible for a single provider to either monopolize content or functionalities to perpetuate um, a situation where there will be competition under the ownership of the scientific community. But to allow this process to happen, the money that is currently keeping the legacy system running needs to be shifted away from the publishers towards this new decentralized infrastructure. This is the second major proposal that we um, suggest in this uh, article. What we propose is that research funders expand their eligibility criteria for the institutions such that institutions receive and experience an incentive to move money away from a legacy infrastructure to a more modern infrastructure. Essentially, every research funder already has an an, a set of eligibility criteria for a certain minimum infrastructures that means uh, laboratories, uh, electricity, of course, gas, water, uh, computers. So infrastructure that is required to do the research that the funder or the funding agency is funding. And we propose that this, these eligibility criteria are expanded to include this new modern uh, framework that investments in legacy infrastructure such as journals are discouraged via financial means. That would replace negotiated deals with standard tender processes. And uh, that would provide incentives for institutions to modernize their infrastructure because otherwise their members would not be allowed to apply for funding. It would step away from the reliance on prestige metrics and develop new and allow us to develop new modern and adaptable systems for assessing the quality of our outputs. And it would ensure that these metrics, how they are collected and how they are used, that they are transparent and reproducible. Thank you very much.